Well, hello, friends. John, your whiskey neighbor here. Welcome to my deck. Today, I want to talk to you about a Highland Scotch, one that's been aged for 12 years in only X sherry casks. So, when we get back from the break, we're going to take a look at Glen Farkless 12 year old Highland Scotch. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me. That was a really fast opener. Uh, continues to be pretty interesting times here as we work to keep everyone safe coming back to schools. Uh, I'll say it at the end, but I'm going to say it now, you know, a toast, a hats off, some good scotch to all the teachers that are working so, so hard in shifting, changing conditions. And for parents that are looking to support them and, and keep their kids safe. Uh, I think we got this. But it's challenging times, and it's a good time on the weekend to look at some scotch. So I want to talk to you about Glen Farkless 12-year-old. This is, um, as I said, it's a Highland scotch. Uh, you know, the Glen Farkless distillery is in the Speyside region, uh, but they have chosen to market themselves as a Highland scotch, which, of course, anyone in the Speyside region can, because technically it's a sub-region or part of the Highland Scotch region. Uh, as I said quickly in the opener, uh, you know, this is known for uh, for its aging in sherry casks. I believe it's Oloroso. Um, that's how I would uh, take it from, from the taste, but I actually didn't find specific what type of X sherry. Uh, I believe it's a mix of first fill and second fill with a 12 year old, I think has a fair amount of second fill, but it's still all uh, X sherry casking. Uh, 12 years old and released at uh, 43%. I don't know anything about um, coloring or, or filtering. Um, any of my uh, uh, European, especially German viewers, can tell us exactly if there's any uh, coloring in here. At 43 and without it mentioning, I imagine it's been filtered. But Glen Farkless is a pretty cool family distillery, one of only a few that I know of. Um, and, uh, and I still... I think they're a pretty big distillery. I think that they, they have a wide range and, and a pretty uh, significant output. Um, they have six stills, something like that, maybe three million barrels, something like that. Anyways, I think they're they're big, but at the same time they're family owned and, and that's pretty cool. Uh, I believe they're still direct fired stills, um, like a natural gas, I think, instead of a steam bath. Um, someone could also correct me if I'm out of date on that. I know when I started paying attention to scotch, uh, they were, uh, but now I guess I should have done a little more homework. But I had a moment to share a dram with you and I just really wanted to. It's been a, it's been a challenging week. So this is Glenn Farkless, 12 year old, all X sherry. Let's see what the whiskey tells us. I think it's a great nose, and I think this nose uh, would be really good to have around to to remind yourself, you know, okay, X sherry, you know, what are we going to get in the nose? And I think this nose really speaks that. It's got, you know, some some raisin, fig, plum, you know, dark fruit. It's got a little bit of a spicing to it, um, like a baking spice, that uh, clove or cinnamon somewhere in there. Yeah, a spiced, rich, uh, darker fruit. Uh, yeah, I, I just like the nose. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a different style nose, uh, you know, a high hot cinnamon or a, a peated or a smoky, you're not going to get any of that. But in terms of looking for those cooked red fruits, gentle spicing, I think this nose will pull you in. I don't know sure what else, else to add. You know, there's some vanillas in there, a little light toffee. I, I, I'm, this bottle's been open for a little while, so um, it was a little hotter up front, I would say, a little more alcohol, but it, that kind of alcohols did seem to dissipate giving it a month or so, or two. That's the nose. See how it tastes. 
Sadece. This palette has more of that darker fruit and some clove. A little bit of bitterness for me. And then it comes back more kind of sweet fruit, malt. Better try another sip. Yeah. Palette, um, obviously, well not obviously, for me it follows the nose. It's not quite as rich as the nose. The nose to me is quite nice. Pulls me in, really like it. Almost a, almost a, you know, dry wood, old wood, edge of nut. Yeah, nose, I like the nose. And the palette is good. It's a tasty dram. Um, it's a little hot. A little bitter for me and the finish stays in that edge that little wood tannic um some spicing i like it but i don't feel it's as good as the nose eh, for me and uh, this bottle that brings up an interesting point with glenn farkless i feel now i have not had that many bottles it's so anecdotal Probably not true, but I have felt significant batch variation, more on the 105 than the 12. Um, and when I say batch variation, what I've had with some Glen Farkless is a, is a little too high sulfurs or a burnt edge. And then sometimes a, a cherry cough syrup like that I haven't liked. That's happened to me on the 15, which I know is many people's favorites, but it's been a little bit of a love-hate on that 15. The 12 has been more consistent. It's a little rougher, but I like it and it's tasty. It's a tasty dram, it really is. Uh, we're gonna compare it in a minute, but just, you know, my complete thoughts on this is, this remains a really excellent value in my market for a 12-year-old full sherry dram. Uh, it's, the sherry's a little weaker than some first fills like that I've had. It still qualifies, like, is it a sherry bomb? It's right on that edge. It's a full sherry dram. I'll put it that way. Could be a little chewier. Could be a little more, you know, berry and, and whatnot in the palate to be a sherry bomb. The nose is rich. Even edges of chocolate. And the palate, if you keep having a few sips, actually cleans up a little bit. The bitterness for me... It's always on the edge, but it does fade a little bit. I know it's it's my cop-out. I enjoy this dram score, but I'm going to put it in at four stars. It, it really is actually quite good, quite good. Um, and, I, and I like it, and I'll, I'll be buying it again. It, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a definite uh, try for sure if you haven't yet. And of course, if you had, then you know what you're getting into. But I would say it's worth it if you like sherry. If you don't like sherry, I don't think it's going to change your mind. It's not fresh enough, but uh, it's a good brand. All right, let's let's uh, let's compare it to uh, Glen Goyne. Almost done that bottle. Now, Glen Goyne is also a Highland Scotch. Um, it clearly says on it natural color, 43%. Um, but it's just, I don't know, what, what something like 20 miles north of the border to Lowland. So it's it's not in this Bayside region whatsoever, but classified as a Highland. See what the nose tells us. This has um, brighter fruits, add some citrus or lemon, more uh, add some cut pear or something a little juicier but a little bit tart. Yeah, yeah, that, that's how I would characterize. I like this nose, dark, rich, some red fig, red fig. I was gonna say red fruit, and then it got a little, it got a little. Uh, I don't know, a little pithier, a little sweeter, cooked brown sugar, so I kind of went to fig. Ah, uh, man, I like that nose. I like this nose too. But this this perks up, and, and uh, I feel like I have to open my eyes a little bit. There's there's a little more, more lemon and tartness going on in the palate. I 
it's got hints of that the red fruit but it, it answers with other fruits cut apple it's a cleaner dram it just doesn't have that kind of bitterness that i've got going on it has less sherry influence as well in this head-to-head -head, uh, i don't I can't remember what i rated the glen going at now this is a richer darker nose mm. but there's something on it that's just keeping me from loving it i can't put too much water in it because it's only 43. Um, in this head-to-head, -head, the freshness, the little bit of lemon cut, the different fruits, the cleaner palette, um, I actually am really liking that Glen Goyne. Uh, and so I would I would give the nod to Glen Goyne, I guess four and a quarter then, uh, and this would stay closer to, closer to four stars. There's my thoughts on the comparison. If you're sticking around, that's awesome. Let's see how the Glen Farkless has moved with just a, just a splash of water, see how that wakes it up. Muted the nose, added a bit of oak. Oh, that singed my nose a little bit. I didn't like water on the nose. It didn't bring out any, any fruits I wasn't getting before. Mm. I lightened it up. Um, got a little more... Little more our um, red berry jam, but not jammy like that thicky. But I'm just saying like, uh, yeah, lighter, sweeter. Mm. Didn't really help the bitterness. Still kicking around. Water didn't help it for me. Hey, you guys, uh, thanks for joining me on my deck. I hope I get another moment this weekend and maybe shoot another video and release it. Uh, love the conversation. Really appreciate you know your comments. Have you had Glenn Farkless? And if you have, what's your favorite? Um, for me, it's the 17 uh, or 105. Oh, shoot. I really like 105. Anyways, uh, I've, had, I've had the 12, 15, 17, 105, and the 21. Um, and I, uh, I tend to like, uh, actually, now that I've said it again, probably the 105. That's crazy. Um, or if you have going, going, you want to talk about that or just anything you want. I really like the conversation. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a great, safe week. Thank you.